Hello everyone, welcome back to another tutorial from biology with Shalini and in this tutorial we are going to talk about nucleus. So nucleus is the largest organelle or structure present inside of a eukaryotic cell wherein eu means true and karyotic is derived from the term or word carrion which means nucleus. So this is the feature which differentiates it from prokaryotic cell structure was described by Robert Brown and this is delimited by a nuclear envelope. What does it mean? It means um, if you look at the structure of a cell, very rough structure. So this is a cell, right? And cell is having outer membrane and inner membrane. And there is this nucleus which also has outer and inner membrane. And here we can see the presence of cytoplasm and many and many other organelles, cell organelles as well. So, iske beech mein to demarcate the boundary of nucleus, presence of nuclear envelope is very very much required. Generally, a cell has one nucleus and if the cell has one nucleus, it is called as uninucleated cell. And in case of RBCs, mature RBCs because younger ones, they do have nucleus. Okay, so in case of mature RBCs, they have no nucleus and such cells are called as enucleated cells and if cells have two nucleus for example in case um, of paramecium we see the presence of macronucleus and micronucleus both have distinct functions so they are called binucleated cells and some cells have more than two nucleus these are called as multinucleated cells for example skeletal muscles now outer and inner membrane of nucleus they are perforated by pores and these pores have nuclear pore complex attached onto them they have very uh, crucial function which i am which i am going to describe later on nucleus so, is mostly present or located in center of the cell in case of animal cells but uh, in general, mostly it is present in the center of the cell, but it can be present anywhere. It can be present um, towards the periphery. It can be present anywhere. And it is also called as control center of the cell because it regulates uh, gene expressions. It regulates DNA replication, uh, ribosome formation and transcription. So essentially, this is the control center of the cell. It is uh, spherical in shape. But it may be flattened or irregular depending on the type of the cell and also um, the shape also changes as the cell matures. Uh, for example, columnar epithelial cells. In case of columnar epithelial cells, it is elongated as compared to the nucleus present in uh, the cells around. So look at the structure of this nucleus. It has outer membrane and inner membrane and collectively they can be called as karyotheca. It has nuclear pores. It has nuclear pore complex. Um, nuclear pore complex. It has perinuclear space. This space is present between the outer membrane and inner membrane of the nucleus. And outer membrane, it has ribosomes attached to the outer membrane. It has chromatin and in the center of the nucleus we see a darkly stained region. This is called as nucleolus. It is generally darker than the area surrounding it. Now this outer membrane is in continuation with the rough endoplasmic reticulum and it has its own significance which I will uh, include in my next series which will involve all the organelles present in a cell. These structures are nuclear lamina. You know, we'll one, uh, discuss all these uh, components one by one. So, so components of a nucleus are phospholipid bilayer membrane, chromatin, nucleoplasm, nucleolus, nuclear pore complex, nuclear lamina. So first comes bilayer membrane. So nucleus is a membrane bound organelle as you can see by, as you can tell by looking at uh, the structure. It is a membrane bound organelle and this nucleus, this nuclear membrane is a double layered structure having outer membrane and inner membrane. Between these two is perinuclear space and this perinuclear space is approximately 100 angstroms to say 500 angstroms in width. 
and this is in continuation with rough endoplasmic reticulum lumen of rough endoplasmic reticulum now and this inner membrane inner membrane surrounds the fluid of the nucleus that is nucleoplasm and this outer membrane gives rise to the cisternae of the endoplasmic reticulum and these membranes are approximately 75 to 90 angstroms in thickness second comes nuclear pore complex so basically nuclear pores are small channels you know small channels spanning the nuclear envelope and it controls entry and exit of the substance inside of the nucleus okay it regulates what should come in and what should go out so material ka jo movement hai this is basically controlled by nuclear pores and most uh, precisely by nuclear pore complex so each pore is lined by a set of proteins which um, which is called as nuclear pore complex so this nuclear pore complex has is made up of various proteins and subunits but at least these three subunits are of uh, very much importance to the nuclear pore complex and these are luminal subunit columnar subunit and annular subunit so this lum luminal subunit anchors nuclear pore complex to nuclear envelope ye basically nuclear pore complex ko attach karta hai anchor karta hai nuclear envelope pe, ke upar and columnar subunit forms the bulk of nuclear pore complex and annular subunits controls the porosity of nuclear pore complex porosity basically refers to kya material jo hai kya molecules nucleus ke andar aayenge aur kya ja rahe hain so these luminal uh, subunits are basically large glycoproteins right so they anchor nuclear pore complex to nuclear envelope so actual pore wall jo hoti hai this is comprised of columnar subunit and luminal subunit outer and inner membrane of nuclear you see outer membrane and inner membrane of nuclear envelope are fused together at these pores राइट right? यहाँ यहाँ पर ये दोनों फ्यूज नहीं थे तो जब ये न्यूक्लियर पोर के पास जाते हैं दे फ्यूज डज वट डज इट इंश्योर इट इट इंश्योर द कॉन्टीन्यूटी ऑफ मेम्ब्रेन विद वन एंड अदर अदरवाइज ये कॉन्टीन्यूटी जो है ब्रेक हो जाती नाउ आफ्टर दिस कम्स इट इज मेड अप ऑफ फिफ्टी टू हंड्रेड डिफरेंट प्रोटीन्स न्यूक्लियस ऑफ अ मेमेलियन सेल कंटेन्स थ्री थाउजेंड टू फोर थाउजेंड पोर्स and these pores are octagonal in shape and diameter of these pores are approximately 7 700 to 800 angstroms now next comes nuclear lo localization signal so nuclear pores they are freely permeable for aqueous molecules up to 5000 dalton so however this does not permit the nucle molecules with a size 6000 dalton or more than that which are generally uh, needed or required inside the nucleus so in this case what happens that proteins to be imported or exported from the nucleus it has to contain specific amino acid sequences called nuclear localization signal what does it mean it means that koi bhi protein ko agar nucleus ke andar bhejna hai aur koi bhi protein ko agar nucleus ke bahar jana hai तो उसके लिए उसके ऊपर सपोज दिस इज अ प्रोटीन तो इसके जो है यहाँ पर जो सीक्वेंसेज होंगे स्पेसिफिक सीक्वेंसेज होंगे सो सपोज इफ दिस इज द न्यूक्लियस तो यहाँ पे जो है वो ट्रांसपोर्टर प्रोटीन्स होंगी जो इस सीक्वेंस को है रिकग्नाइज करेंगी और फिर उनको जो है वो न्यूक्लियस के अंदर लेके जाएंगी और सिमिलरली इसी तरह से अंदर भी जो ट्रांसपोर्टर प्रोटीन्स होंगी वो न्यूक्लियस के अंदर से जो हमें बाहर मेटीरियल uh, एक्सपोर्ट करना है विच इज Which which is more than six thousand six thousand daltons in molecular weight, वो उस transporter protein के साथ transporter के साथ attach होके nucleus के बाहर भेजी जाएंगी. So this is the simple thing. So next comes nuclear lamina. Nuclear lamina stabilize the nucleus, or it is also called as nuclear cytoskeleton attached to inner layer. It it consists of protein filament to provide mechanical reinforcement. सो दिस स्ट्रक्चर दिस न्यूक्लियस इसका जो साइटोस्केलेटन है वो कौन बनाता है न्यूक्लियर लेमाइना बनाता है जो कि इसको मैकेनिकल सपोर्ट प्रोवाइड करता है नाउ कम्स न्यूक्लियोप्लाज 
Nucleoplasm is also called as karyoplasm or nucleus sap. It is a gel-like substance and it is rich in enzymes, say DNA, polymerase, hexokinase or many more. And it also has divalent ions like magnesium and ma uh, manganese. These, these are activators of enzymes and DNA floats in it. Messenger RNA, ribosomal RNA, all floats in it. Okay. So what happens uh, in nucleoplasm that it is rich in enzymes required for replication, for transcription, etc. It is enveloped by nuclear envelope and is actually a type of protoplasm similar to cytoplasm. So nucleoplasm has, this is nucleoplasm has water, it has dissolved ions and it also has enzymes. What is the difference between nucleoplasm and cytoplasm? As, as I said that this is actually uh, very similar to cytoplasm. So cytoplasm and cytoplasm, they are quite similar, but they do have number of differences in terms of organelles, components and operations. Like it has nucleoplasm has chromatin, whereas cytoplasm doesn't have chromatin, DNA replication, occurs in nu nucleoplasm you know transcription also occurs in nucleoplasm whereas all these functions are absent in cytoplasm and in nucleoplasm also um, all the components all the nucleotides necessary for the construction of dna are present right so after this comes chromatin chromatin is a thread like structure and chromatin helps in shrinking and compacting long strings of dna so that it can fit better inside a cell otherwise we know that dna are very long so it would have been difficult to fit them inside the cell if the histones are the histones were not present because histones basically help in the compactness of or in compacting the structure so these are complex of dna and proteins like histone proteins and when a cell is ready to divide it condenses itself into chromosome so when the cell is active and ready to divide you see the presence of chromosome and in its resting phase chromatins are present uh, chromatins are generally seen next comes nucleolus nucleolus is an intracellular structure and not an organelle and this is built by a nuclear organizer region of specific chromosomes which codes for ribosomal rna subunits okay these regions this nuclear organizer region have genes for ribosomal RNA subunit and these are usually found in central nuclear region and uh, means it is present in the center of the nucleus but it can be close to nuclear membrane also and usually every cell every nucleus has one or two um, nucleolus. nucleolus is that this nuclear organizer region contains genes for 18s ribosomal RNA 20s ribosomal rna and 5.8s ribosomal rna okay so rna polymerase 1 jo hai wo iski transcription karta hai and 45s ribosomal rna banata hai and this 5s ribosomal rna jo hai this is processed into the subunits of ribosomes because ribosome mein kya 60s or 40s subunit hota hai and this 18s ribosomal r it makes for the smaller subunit which is 40s subunit and isi ki processing ke baad mein after combining it with proteins which are imported from outside ye 28s or 5.8s unko banata hai jo ki hai larger subunit ke components here you can see 5s 5s is transcribed by rna polymerase third which is imported from outside 5s ribosomal RNA jo hai nucleolus ke andar nahi banta hai aur ye large subunit jo hai ribosome ka 60s usko banata hai so this large particle you can see, you see here is an association of 45s ribosomal RNA and proteins imported from cytosol right and the key point here is that 5s ribosomal RNA is not synthesized in nucleolus but is imported okay and it forms larger subunit of eukaryotic ribosome so larger subunit is 60s subunit and smaller subunit of ribosome is 40s subunit uh, and these these subunits are later on transported out to cytosol for final assembly